Whenever you start this hobby, everything seems so exciting. You know, you've got all these pretty fish of all sorts of different colors. You've got so many options in terms of equipment, in terms of how you can do things. And there are so many different types of coral. It's all very exciting, really, truly. But people always fail to mention when you're starting out, you know, in the saltwater aquarium world, they fail to mention that you will no longer experience vacations the same at all. In fact, they're actually going to seriously stress you out. We're talking from the days prior where you're scrambling around trying to get everything together, all of this maintenance done, but also the entire duration of the vacation, you know, where you're constantly checking on your tank, seeing if everything's okay. Even if everything is okay, you're really extremely paranoid. And then when you come home, you always have to deal with a bunch of issues and maintenance. It's not fun, but hey, this is the hobby. We love it. I'm actually going on vacation next week for an entire week and <laughs> I'm extremely stressed out. I'm not even thinking about the vacation, honestly. It's just, there's so much to do. There's so much to think about. So I figured in this video, since I have to do all that stuff anyway, or at least I should, I'm gonna take you through the steps to getting everything sorted for your now stressful vacation. <laughs> it's really simple. There's honestly not that much you have to do. You know, obviously doing everything and preparing beforehand is definitely going to help you in terms of avoiding terrible situations, but there's really not much, at least not with my current setup. But I'm telling you, it is kind of troubling, no lie, that I'm gonna be gone a whole week from the 40 gallon, which is now incredibly filled up, and the new 220 gallon. You know, it's 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 a lot, but we're gonna we're gonna go through the steps. So one thing that you really need to make sure that you have on hand before you go on vacation is definitely have plenty of fresh water. Plenty of fresh water. Now you can either get your fresh water at a store or have an RODI unit set up as I do, which by the way, if you haven't bought one already, you have to like do it as soon as possible. Your future self will appreciate it so much more because lugging jugs of water around is just insanity if you think about it. And honestly, like at least you know what salt is being used. I mean, you could always ask, but still, the convenience is just stupid. Like you have to go out and buy one. Seriously, if you haven't, go do it now. So worth it. Make sure you have plenty of fresh water, enough to fill up your auto top off reservoir if you have one, or account for any water evaporation that you know that you might tank you know that your tank would need, depending on how long you're gone and how much your tank evaporates, typically. But with that being said, you should always make sure that you have much more than you anticipate that you will need because honestly, like, peace of mind, you know? There's nothing wrong with collecting a little bit more fresh water. And with all of this fresh water that you have made, you're going to fill up your auto top off reservoir, such as mine right here which is a beast, but you'd be surprised how much this thing evaporates. So you're definitely gonna wanna fill it up way to the top. Have your auto top off set up, working, functioning fine. If you don't currently have one on your tank and you're leaving out of town, it's essential that you get one unless somebody has agreed to, you know, babysit your tanks, which in that case, you could have them, you know, add fresh water from a jug, you know, whatever. But I still think that it's worth investing in like a little, like whatever, auto top off, because worst case scenario, it doesn't work as you anticipated, but you already have a tank sitter who can, who can, you know, top it off for you. Highly recommend getting an auto top off for any kind of travel whatsoever. So definitely get one, set it up, fill up your auto top off reservoir to the top, no matter how long you're gone and make sure everything is functioning correctly. Now I know that during my week, I'm going to definitely probably run dry on this thing, even if I fill it to the very rim. So I do have somebody coming watching my tanks, which is awesome. So going to add some jobs of fresh water next to tank instructions. But in terms of my innovative marine little 40 gallon here, I haven't actually had an auto top off set on this thing for a while. So definitely now is the time to invest in one. I didn't really wanna make much of an investment though. I got this little JBJ auto top off here. However, like I said, I have a tank sitter. So, you know, if they see anything bubbling or anything like that, they're definitely gonna add fresh water. But regardless, got a little auto top off here that I'm going to set up. now. In here, like an 
they can open this. In here, I actually already have an auto top off reservoir, you know, because I, I once upon a time did actually, in fact, intend to keep one in there. I don't know why I never actually set the thing up, but definitely now I wanna take advantage of this thing and add some fresh water in this tank too. This thing evaporates in like no time, so. But if you don't have that auto top off luxury or have a really weird situation where you can't exactly add one for whatever reason, I usually place a lot of five gallon freshwater buckets right here my little tank sitter to just add it you know whenever the chamber gets low here so just making everything simple for whoever is coming to slave for your hobby and i hate to break it to you my dudes but you actually have to get around to doing that maintenance that you've put off gotta clean that glass and actually get around to doing a water change on all of your tank although this one doesn't really need it and i'm not going to be gone that long i mean it's safe to say i'm not going to bother with this one. Is that because I'm lazy? Probably, I think I can get away with it. However, with that innovative Marine 40 gallon, there's no way I'm not getting away with it. A little water change ain't hurt no one. So, and honestly speaking from experience, from having people like look after my fish while I'm gone, there's always overfeeding, always. So might as well help out a little bit with that, especially if, you know, you're already having issues. You show them how to feed, you show them how to not overfeed, they're always going to overfeed. Trust me on that one. Speaking of maintenance you need to get around doing, make sure that your equipment doesn't look like mine does. Clean out those filter socks because they're absolutely disgusting and make sure that nasty skimmer is all fixed up. I mean, don't, don't leave for vacation with everything looking like this, obviously. <laughs> That's not good. Also in terms of equipment, Make sure that everything here is functioning correctly and then check again and again. I was literally out of town for wrap like the other day and this, this thing prior to leaving for wrap made sure that i made a lot of fresh water that auto top off reservoir was filled to the brim i did check all of my equipment everything at this point was functioning fine and then the day of or at least the night before the tunzi was beeping talking about my water level was too high my water level was just fine i just have this ongoing like hate relationship not even love hate just a hate relationship honestly at this point i just unplugged it like, like I usually do. I just let it have like its fit in silence and usually I end up plugging it back in. I forgot to plug it back in. So two days into the show, I realized this grave mistake. Luckily, there was somebody nearby that could come plug it in again for me. Had there not been, my pump there would be running dry disaster. So I would suggest that not only like do you take the time to set up all of your equipment prior and check it prior, but also check the day of. I mean, really, you cannot be too careful. I did everything right and then forgot to replug the Tunzi. All of that water that I put in that auto top off, didn't even serve a purpose. Everything almost ran dry. It's just a headache. And then when you realize something's wrong, like you kind of, you genuinely freak out and like harass the people that are trying to help you. Save yourself the headache, do a like a double check. Like, you know, when you leave the house and you think your oven is on, so you go back inside to check that it really is off. This is the same. Before you leave the house for your vacation and you're just running out the door, remember that your auto top off is unplugged. Go check your auto top off. It's probably plugged in, but you don't know. You know, you don't know. So worth worthwhile to double check right before you leave the door. Pro tip for my mistakes, as always. I feel like that's the only time I actually had pro tips, is it? I also should add that if you need to dose your tank while you're gone, make sure that you don't set up a doser for this purpose unless it's several weeks before and you've had the chance to dial in a doser correctly and watched it and observed it and at least made sure it was running properly for a good amount of time before your trip. I literally did that once, dialed in a doser and just left. My entire tank crashed. I don't really wanna go there because it was a really idiotic decision, but I sure learned my lesson about dosing pumps and vacations, trust me. Obviously the ideal situation would be to have like a Trident kind of deal going on. So you have an idea of what's going on, you know, when you're gone. You know, Apex is nice too. Any kind of like controlling, the more control situations you have going on, obviously the better. Are they completely accurate the entire time? 
Not always, but hey, you have a good idea, a peace of mind. Like I swear, I feel like all reefers when they're like on vacation or something, are just constantly checking their camera that's watching their tank, which is the camera thing I'll never really get because it's like, what are you even getting from that? And I'm, I'm kind of understanding that more because I'm also psycho. So maybe I should set up a camera tonight or something. I don't know. I feel like that would make me like even more paranoid. Like I would be compulsively checking everything like 10 times more. If you're setting up any kind of automated equipment, especially, especially, especially dosers, do it a few weeks, as many weeks prior as you can. I think if you don't have any kind of doser set up and you're about to leave for vacation, I really would not recommend that you trust anybody to like hand dose your tank or anything. I don't care if they've been in the hobby for like 30 years, okay? Just, when it comes to like chemicals in the tank, I think that's where I draw the line. I think that's where I draw the line. Nah, you know, um, it depends on how long you're gone for, honestly, because if you're not gone for long, is the swing gonna be that bad? You know, I mean, obviously that's a judgment call for you and you to make, especially if you're going out of town for a while and you have like acros, you know, definitely think about something else, some, some kind of situation, but, um, you know, also it probably wouldn't hurt to keep like backups of equipment that might malfunction, like heaters, because heaters are absolutely the most unreliable thing in this hobby. I would definitely back that one up. Back it up, uh, back that up, back that heater up. You know, it doesn't hurt to have one around. It's gonna break eventually. So even if you don't use it at your vacation, when it randomly breaks in the middle of, you know, the night and you can't get a new one, you know, you got a backup heater. So hoarding aquarium heaters is like never a bad idea. That's one thing I will never fight you on. Do highly recommend that you find some sort of like tank sitter. Obviously the best scenario would be to have another hobbyist come in. And if that's not the case, if you don't have that handy, I would just leave detailed instructions, the most detailed instructions as possible. Some kind of warning of what not to do. Definitely have emergency contact kind of information for both you and ideally maybe somebody that is in your area, like another hobbyist or a store even, that they can call to figure out when something like crazy happens or something bad goes wrong, you know? I'm also psycho, so whenever I leave like the items that they need to use, sticky notes, like I place them everywhere, just like a little reminder because you, <laughs> You'd be surprised. A detailed manual, sticky notes, locking them through. It's still not absolutely certain that they will actually follow it. But as always, all of this depends on how long you're actually gone for. If you're doing like any kind of extended scenario, you're gonna have to probably pay somebody like a store or another hobbyist to actually come here and do the stuff like the dosing and the water changes, et cetera, et cetera. So for feeding your fish, obviously the ideal scenario would be to have like an auto fish feeder. Freaks me out though. But if your fish are on pallets or lakes, then an automatic feeder should be something you should look into. I've tried for so long, like trying to get my fish adjusted to like pallets and flakes. I tried everything. I tried mixing it in their food. No, they will not take to anything but frozen mices. I'm in that situation now that I have to get somebody to come and feed them. So this is actually how I always feed my fish, but it's really useful when, you know, you have somebody tank sitting. It gives them like a visual representation. You can't really go wrong because you have everything laid out, you know. So essentially all I say is two blocks, pop in, the shot glass, take tank water, put it in the shot glass, wait a minute or two, and then voila. Give pipettes for each day. Cutting the pipette, you, you can kind of assist with overfeeding, which tends to be a tendency of tank sitters, generally speaking. So if you cut the pipettes or not cut them, it really does kind of have some level of control about how much mice and shrimp actually goes in there. Everything's so much easier when it's all laid out in there for you. More simple that you make this process on somebody who is not a hobbyist, better off you're gonna be. So yeah, those are the considerations you need to make when traveling with a beloved reef aquarium at home. Obviously this prep may or may not involve what I mentioned or may even involve more things, but because everybody's tank maintenance routines and tank sizes, length of vacation all kind of varies. These are just the general considerations that you should be making when traveling or before traveling, I mean. But at least they're at least they're the ones that I make. But with that being said, if I have missed something, please let me know in the comments. I really don't want to come back to any kind of disaster. So give me a heads up. I would appreciate it. I'd like to 
think I'm funny, but I swear it's just my funny video editing. I'm actually pretty unfunny IRL. Like I'll crack a lot of jokes, don't get me wrong, but you definitely won't be laughing at them. Also, I legitimately took a screenshot of this on my phone for keeps so I can look at it when I'm frustrated with this whole thing. So thank you. You'd be surprised how lazy of a reefer I can be. You know, as the tank gradually matures, so does my effort. I mean, but of all laziness, I think mine might be justified, maybe? And yeah, mystery boxes are absolutely terrifying. So I'm actually very pleasantly surprised with just how much I adore them. And yeah, you right, you right. Unboxing corals, honestly, is just so exciting. I just get carried away and I definitely fail on the frag rack debuts. I should like make one of those HD 12 hour coral reef aquarium relaxing videos for meditation, relaxing or sleeping or something. Just blastos for hours.